I'm thinking job. What? He said, I'm sending you in to shift the culture. He said, that's a bad culture. And he said, Super Seven is sent for you, not just for the work, he sent for you to change the culture. The guy that was in charge before I got there, he would always cuss with the inspectors, always cussing with the superintendent, fighting and everything he tell him to do. Because I'm sending you in to change the culture. Culture is a set mindset of a people to go a certain direction. So when I came in, I implemented a kingdom culture. I was now, the specter was so, prophecy was so strict. The rebar must have been three inches. If you were three and a quarter inches, he wants you to move it. Now he's coming to me saying, well, what do you think about this? The specter, the same one. Because I shifted the culture. Because when I, wherever I go, the whole, my whole government goes with me. See what I'm saying? Wherever you go, your whole government goes with you. And it was strategically to teach you. So I'm talking about kingdom now. Everywhere you go, your whole government travel with you. Amen. Back in the Old Testament days when kings, there was kings that used to leave parts of the country and go to warm areas for the wintertime. And when they went, they took their whole government with them. Wherever you go, this is what I'm trying to tell you, your whole government follows yes. you. Yes. I'm not talking United States government, I'm talking your whole government yes. follows you. Amen. So when you find somebody here, somebody here got a meeting this week and they're a little intimidated by it. When you find yourself in this meeting, your whole government is in there with you. And it will strategically tell you when to shut up, when to speak, what to speak. And whatever it speaks is always to advance you in the kingdom. So God said, don't be intimidated by this meeting. Somebody need to hear this. Adopt a new thinking pattern. Start looking at some of the things that's going on in your life, some of the things that surround you, and say, how is this adding to my kingdom value? Amen. When you start putting stuff in the wastebasket, how is this adding to my original intent that God created me? How is this adding to this? If it's not, put it in the wastebasket. But watch something rise up out of the ruins. Amen? Amen. Amen. A kingdom paradigm happens when the value of the new truth you hear exceeds the value of the old belief you're holding on to. In every example, the old is abandoned and the new is embraced. Wow, Amen. listen to this. The word value. The word value here means the regard that something is held to deserve the importance, the worth, or the youthfulness of something. Listen to this. It said when a kingdom paradigm happens, the, the regards to this, this new truth you hear, it sees the value you had on the old truth. It's meaning I'm willing to step away from this old belief system and step into the revelation. You have to be willing to do that. In every aspect of your life, you have to be willing to do that. So what happens is that when you have this happens, in every example, the old is abandoned and the new is embraced. We're trying to hold on to both. It's not gonna work. You're not gonna never shift to that degree that God wants you to do. You're not gonna go that in that further in that process of colonization. Everything has to line up with the kingdom. Any questions? Is anybody in here struggling with throwing away some old values and beliefs mm -hmm. that are contradicting your kingdom truth that you hear? Mm -hmm. Anybody in here battling with that? Yes. You have to be willing to either believe the revelation or the kingdom truth. And in that process, you have to abandon. You have to abandon the old truth. That's where the battle is going in front. You're trying to hold on to both. See what I'm saying? You're going to have to abandon the old in order to walk into that kingdom paradigm that God has called. It becomes very uncomfortable 
when when you start going back into the environment that's old. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, you know, it just got unbearable. It got to the point where, you know, I just, I couldn't see the anymore. Mm -hmm. So uh, some of the places that Apostle and I used to go, you know, we, we can't even go back there anymore because it's so uncomfortable. Because because of the 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 the, uh, the place you are in in colonization to the degree of process of colonization has taken place to that degree you know it becomes unbearable or oh, profit agent it becomes like sickening you know even to the point where you get angry with yourself for being in it you know what I'm saying that's true and I didn't understand that Pravini Pravini was teaching. Was teaching and one of the things that helped me with it was one of the teachers he did when he says that God would turn your heart against something. And I, I started, I started, okay, okay, God, God, you've turned my heart toward this and this and this. He said, you know, in that process of colonization, that will begin to turn your heart away from these things that you used to do. Amen. See, we're not, see, this is the thing about kingdom. We're not talking about sin. We're not talking about sin here. We're not talking about adultery. Thing. We're talking about stumbling things that religion puts on your plate. See, religion is so stuck in, in sin. Kingdom, you got past this. You're moving into to, to your original intent. The process to get into that original intent of God. That becomes a problem. Any questions? Any comments? When you, first, when you first began speaking, you used the water bottle as an example. And as you went on, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me and he said, we look at that as being a water bottle. Why? Because of the contents that's in it. Amen. But the Holy Spirit told me, he said, the manufacturer of that bottle don't care what you put in it. He made a bottle. bottle. In Genesis, God said, let us make man in our own image and our likeness. Amen. Later on in the New Testament, he said, let this mind, which is in Christ Jesus also. Yeah. Okay. God is telling us, amen, he made us with a purpose. Amen. And what we put in us is going to determine what, we, what label we end up having on us. Uh -huh. Amen. So as, as, as a kingdom citizen, amen, what we put in us is going to determine our label. Amen. And, 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 and I was like, God, but this is not really helping me. He said, okay, think about it. In order to make a big impact, think about a bomb. If you were to take a gas tank full of gasoline and throw a match in it, Amen. It would go out. But if you take the same gas tank and put a little bit of gas in it and throw a match, it would explode. Simply because what took place was the liquid is not that not that combustible, but the gases that's in it is. Mm -hmm. That's what would determine whether it's a bomb or not. Amen. And he says, some, sometimes what we got in us, amen, just because you can't see it, you can't shake it up and pull it out, amen, but what he has put in us, amen, if, he, if we let it ferment and become what he wanted to be, amen, when we walk in a room, it'll cause an explosion. Things will change. Amen. 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 This is something me and Prophet I, I shared with Prophet Vidya earlier before, before his last got here. Oh, he said something. Um, determine the value of what we put in us and determine the value that we have on our life. There's a, there's a, uh, a black hockey player named P.K. Sedan. And P.K. Sedan has been in the league for six years. And he said he was sitting home one day and he was pondering. He said, am I a hockey player or am I somebody that plays hockey? He said, he pondered on that. He said, he said, if I'm a hockey player, when my playing career is over with, nobody will remember me. 
He so he went in his bank account and wrote a check for ten million dollars and built a hospital in his native country. P.K. Sedan's Memorial Hospital. He said, no, I'm not a hockey player. I'm somebody that plays hockey. He said, every time you walk through these doors, you'll know who I am. That's what God is telling us. That when, when we find out who we are, we'll be able to do great things. When we find out who we are, we will be able, the resources are right in front of us. But the resources are waiting for us to become who we created us to be. Amen. 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 Because if you're going to do something great in the kingdom, you have to have this create this spiritual kingdom paradigm. If not, you'll do this, you'll do the same thing that you used to do, just with more money. You see what I'm saying? We have to. We have to create a kingdom think thought process. Everything in our life has to center around not kingdom summit ministries. This, this is here today, could go tomorrow. But it's creating a mindset that everything that you think, everything that you do, all of your decisions are based upon the kingdom. That's what we're trying to create here. A kingdom mindset. Amen? Amen. Amen. To be born of the spirit or to be born again means to receive a kingdom paradigm or to receive a spiritual awakening to the God nature that is in you. Amen. We, we studied that earlier. You know, we always thought born again meant that once you got saved, you was born again. But that's, we found that the, that's an old truth. And now we understand that to be born again, to be saved means that you, you've given your life to Christ and you've now gained citizenship back into the kingdom. But to be born again means that you have now picked up your kingdom paradigm or your kingdom mindset, and now you're generating a life that's based upon the belief systems of the kingdom. You know what I'm saying? People for many years and many years I've heard, and we use the word worldly. You know, they, they're worldly. They drinking, they partying, they doing all of these things. They're worldly. But what world really, world it really means is world is the, um, what's the Greek word, cosmos. It means order of government. So what it meant is that if we were still dependent on the, the Babylonian system as a way of a means of surviving, or not surviving, because that's, that's what you do in Babylon, to survive, then we're considered worldly in the eyes of, of God and the kingdom. But when we understand the world from the aspect that God is not, he's, he's created us to live upon the system of the kingdom. And that's what we're trying to learn. We're trying to learn how to live life through the kingdom paradigm. You know, the scripture says, oh, we like children in the marketplace. And um, playing when the kingdom transfer is taking place. We have to be willing to accept the, the truth, the new truth of the kingdom and live according to it. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Elements of the kingdom. The elements of the kingdom. Number one, country, land, and territory. A sphere of influence. Amen. In other words, heaven. That's where we, when we start dealing with the elements, we talk about all the things that consist in the kingdom. Everything that consists in, understand this now. In our kingdom, it's an invisible kingdom, right? So therefore, you can see the president of the United States. You can see him in his position. You can see him in his cabinet. You can see all of these things. But in this kingdom of God, because the kingdom of God is an invisible realm, supernatural realm is invisible, therefore, you now have to, you, that's where faith comes in. You gotta believe all of these positions are in place, but you can't see them. You see what I'm saying? The things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So here, in order for there to be a kingdom, you have to have a country, a land, or a territory. The, the heavenly kingdom represents the, the kingdom of God. It's a territory, it's a literal, actual country that resides in the invisible realm. But it influences this visible realm through the laws and principles of that room. Amen? 
So that's, that's, that's considered the territory. Earth is the is outpost of the kingdom of God. Okay? Number two, king or God, one who rules a sphere with dominance and preeminence. The king of this country or the ruler of this country is God. That's the ruler of this country. It's God. He, if we want to try to do a, a, par, a, a parallel of it, it would be like President Obama is in the United States. Uh, that's as close as I can make a comparison. It's no way in comparison, but that would be like your king. So this king puts forth his laws, his, his rules, and nobody can, nobody can change them. The difference between a king and a president is the king owns the territory. President is somebody we voted into office. The king owns his territory. So he can do what he wants, when he wants, how he wants, without, him, without anybody questioning him. Amen? Number three, citizens, born again believers. Once you're born again, you now become a citizen of the kingdom of God. That's why you see the, the word subject. Subject means that you're in a position to become. But you have to be born again means that you have to be born of the kingdom mindset. You become a citizen to operate. For, because in other words, you will bring shame to the kingdom if you don't know how to act in citizenship. I looked at it on the news, but you know, uh, Richmond hosting this big bike uh, thing in Richmond right now. And it's like 450,000 people they're expecting. One of the Norwegian bike uh, bicyclists, $10,000 racing bike, somebody stole his bike last night. Stole his bike. And when I saw that, I said, see, that makes the Richmond looks bad. As a citizen of the United States, you have a Norwegian to come here to race. That makes our country look bad on a Norwegian mindset. It's the same way in the kingdom of God. When you don't understand citizenship, when you don't understand the, the, the importance of citizenship, you can make your government look bad. And see, that's where the, the process of colonization comes in at. You got to be processed. Process comes in to eliminate everything that's competing with the original intent of God for your life. So when you go through this process, it's to make sure that you don't make the home country look bad. That's why you go into some of these embassies and some of these places, and you'd be like, what the world God, God has left it? Because there's no representation of the kingdom of God. It makes, uh, it makes the kingdom. You know, God is protecting his kingdom. He's protecting his kingdom. He wants his kingdom to be the beacon of light Amen. throughout the earth so that people will want him. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's the reason why they put on all that. I think the, Richmond, uh, the city of Richmond spent $22 million to host this. And a lot of this was putting up, buying and putting up walls and doing this and beautifying the city because they wanted to invite him. They wanted to make sure that the influence of Richmond was on them when they left. When this guy did this, I'm like, that's a, that's a, that's a scar. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same way. And as we understand why we got to take these old truths and put them away, because God wants his kingdom to be presented in the way it's supposed to be. Amen? Amen. Citizens, inhabitants entitled to the rights, power, protection, and privileges of that state. Mm -hmm. Number, Go ahead. Number four, seal the Holy Spirit. An official embossed figure, symbol, mark of any government, a royal class used to protect and authenticate official documents of a kingdom or monarch. Well, I, when we get to this, this teaching on the seal, it's going to be real. It's going to be real good. And they understand the seal. All kingdoms have a seal. And what happens is, it's almost like, if, if you take reference from the scripture, is when the prodigal son 
the prodigal son went back home. One of the things that his father gave him